it's time to make an airbrush holder. Welcome back to the channel and welcome to a custom build day. I'm going to show you how to do a DIY airbrush holder. This will save you quite a bit of money because some of these ones can be quite expensive, especially when you're starting out and you've just weighed out for an airbrush, a compressor, your paints, an easel, lighting, all the stuff that you need to get started. And then the last thing you need is a £25, another hit for an airbrush holder. Now, this one, I've had for a few years. These are all well and good, these ones with the hangers like this, but I find these are a little bit too close together. So when you put the Takume Eclipse on, you'll sit it like that. When you've got paint in these, these can be a little bit front heavy. And I've had times where this has been unclipped and it's, it's tipped out and sort of fell out the hanger. Same goes with the PS2 70. Because you've got the Mac valve, you put it in, yes it will sit like that, but sometimes I always like to have my hangers tilted forward so your paint flow always sits to the front of the brush. I never have it tilted back. And sometimes if you don't get it there like that, these will slide forward and tip out. If you go that side, you're too back heavy and it rocks back. So these sort of light hangers need to be a little bit further apart. So you're getting a good purchase on the body here and probably one to the middle here. And it just sort of steadies the brush a little bit better. The bonus with these ones, you get the screw attachment so you can slide it on your table, your workstation and clamp it to it. The one we're gonna to make today is gonna to be like this, but without the clamp mechanism to the bottom. This one's gonna be a freestanding so you can put it on top of your table. It'll be nice and steady and your brushes won't fall out. So I'll give you a little pan round and show you the bits we're gonna to use today. We've got some wood glue, a little bit of wood glue. You can use any sort of wood glue. This one's a quick set one, which goes off really quick, but you can use your normal wood glues. It'll just mean you have to leave it a day just to go off, because some of the other wood glues take a while to go off. So a wood glue, two pieces of heat shrink. Now you can buy this on eBay. A length of this is dirt cheap. You need this to be able to fit round a metal coat hanger because that's what we're using. Just a metal bog standard coat hanger that you can grab out your wardrobe. So a couple of pieces of heat shrink. I've got a eight mil nut and bolt with a couple of washers. So one of them, dead cheap. A pair of pliers that's got a cutting edge on it so you can cut the coat hanger. Screwdriver, Phillips head, pair of scissors, a wood saw, just a normal wood saw. This is an old beaten up wood saw, but it will do the job. And I've got a drill with like an eight mil drill bit on the end. And finally, a bit of timber batten. We may need a couple of wood screws, probably half inch, inch long, but we'll see that as we go along. Right guys, we're ready to make a start on the first bit that you're gonna need to do. Now, coat hanger, normal metal coat hanger. Now we've got to sort of reproduce this. Now these come in two sides. So the first thing you're going to need to do is undo your coat hanger and be really careful with this guys because it can be quite sharp. So you've got your undone coat hanger like that <clears throat> and we need to cut off this piece. So if you come up about to there so you've got plenty of room Snip that one off, like that, and then snip the same side, so you're left with that. So you've got the V, do the same to the other side. So you've got rid of the two pieces, the bits on there, and you've got, you're left with two pieces like that, nice and simple. And the beauty of coat hangers is these are near enough identical on the bends at the bottom. And they're the bits we're gonna start off with. So we've got to create this. Now, as you can see that, 
So we need to just follow the shape of this on how it would go. So we're going to bend that part across like that. So you've got that looking like that. And now you've got to make that piece that comes down and goes up. So just bend again, bend. So you're creating, let me just do this and then uh, I'll show you. So you're creating that. These are a bit long, but we can chop them down. So your airbrush would sit in here like that. And you can adjust the distance by pinching these together. So that's how the original one sits. It's sort of that sort of thickness, but we're gonna come out slightly and create that. So you've gotta create two of those. So there's the next one. And these will sit back to back like that. We can adjust all the bends in these in a minute, but you're sort of aiming to get that. So now you need to just trim off these two pieces here. Like that. Trim that one. And sort of equal them out. Just trim them back. You've not got to get these perfectly identical mirrored, but as long as they're looking like that, we can bend and adjust when we've got this put together. So this is where your airbrushes would sit either side. The next stage to do on this is to drop your heat shrink. So get your lens a heat shrink. And now all you've got to do is just feed the heat shrink in and just work it round so your aiming site goes in the loop here like that trim it down you can use pliers actually for this bit get your next piece round the coat hanger and just sort of level it up so they look sort of nice and even. Trim the top like that. So now you've got that. Good thing about the heat shrink is it just protects your brush and makes it a little, little bit more grippy so when you put your brush in it doesn't slide around because this is rubber and it just grabs hold of the brush. Now with the heat shrink, you've got to heat this up. You can use a hairdryer. Some people use lighters. So you just basically waft a flame over the heat shrink and this heat shrink shrinks down and will grab hold of the coat hanger. So that's the first one done. So we've got the two hangers made, nice and simple. I'll get these shrunk back in a moment. So that's that bit, nice and quick, done. We'll move on to the next. Moving on to the next stage now guys, we've got a piece of timber batten. This is like an inch by inch length of timber batten. And we've now got to create this piece here, which goes from the hanger part down. This is a steel tube and this would sit in the, the other airbrush holder that I showed you at the beginning and that sort of swivels around. So similar sort of length to that. So I would cut that say about five inches so you're going to need to do a cut with your wood saw, chop it off. And then on this part, hold that there, we've got to create a slice like you can see in that hanger where the screw goes through it. We've got to create a slice down here. So just mark out the center of that timber and drop a line down the center, so you've got something that looks like that. 
So you've got a pencil line that goes down about an inch, down the centre. Follow that line across the top of your tail. So you're looking at something that looks like that. So you've got that line, that marked line, and you've got to hold your timber. This is the fiddly bit, this way you've got to be careful. And you've got to drop the wood saw and cut down both sides of that pencil line down into the timber because you're aiming to put your coat hanger wire to sit in that gap down. So I'll get this bit done off camera. So I'm just gonna chop there, chop it off there, cut down the center an inch down. So you've got a, a slice in the center of that timber and I'll see you in a minute. Right guys, we're moving on to the next stage. So hopefully you've got something that looks like that. That's got the sliced out center this isn't great, you can see that's like a little bit messy cut and it's not bang on centre, but it will do, this will do for this DIY build. So you're aiming for that. Now the actual length of that timber, if you want to know what that is, that is 160 mil long on that piece. Now the next stage is to cut, you need three more pieces of timber. We need a piece which is 90 mil long in the same inch by inch. Find the center of that 90 mil, get a three mil drill bit, and drill all the way through the center. So you've got a hole going through the center of that timber. Then you need to cut two more pieces, 120 mil long, so two pieces like that. Same again, find the center and drill a hole all the way through. So you've got a hole in the timber like that. So you've got three pieces of timber, you should have a piece looking like that, a smaller piece at 90 mil, and two at 120 long, with holes that are drilled in the centers of them, and the center of that. I'll see you in the next step. Right guys, we're moving on to the next step. We've got the pre-drilled holes, so hopefully you've got all these little bits cut and pre-drilled. I've decanted a little bit of the wood glue onto here, because this glue foams up. If you're using something like, normal PVA glue, something like that, would be absolutely fine. So get your piece that's got the cut out, little bit of glue on the bottom, get your 90 mil centerpiece, centralize that up. This one's gonna be a little bit fiddly to do. And you're aiming to screw through your timber. Now when I, Put the drill bit through this, I held this on top like that, held it and just drilled through and into this one as well. So I just went down and piloted into this one with the three mil. Because the screws that I've got, I didn't want to screw this straight down because it will split the timber open. So I just nip that down. Mine's perfectly not centre, but it doesn't matter. That's absolutely fine. So you're aiming to get that little bit of wood glue on there, you've got a screw in the bottom, so that's gonna hold that to there. Now the next stage is to do the same again and mount the legs like that. So you're making a little H frame like that, little bit of glue on them sides, screw through, so same again. So you've got your frame like that, so it sits on the table, nice and sturdy. You put a little bit of glue on that piece, that piece, and on that piece there three screws and that's held that together. Now the next stage is to get these hangers to sit in here like this. So what we need to do is we've got the eight mil bolt that goes through. Change your drill bit up to the eight mil like so and just put a drill hole. If I just mark this up. You're aiming to put a drill hole down about, go down about 10 mil 10 to 15 mil down, and then drill all the way through. Nice and simple. Nice and slow. So I'm aiming for a drill hole like that, going all the way through. Move that to one side, get yourself a little bit of masking tape, sellotape, anything that you've got to hand, 
and we just need to join these two wires together so they're like that just put a loop a bit round the bottom and come halfway up about an inch up the wires and just loop it round so you're aiming to do that so you're just basically joining the two together with a little bit of masking so they sit together like that get your 8 mil bolt washer on the end like that this should slide through at this might just need to work it in drop your hanger in like that drop your other washer on and then when you tighten this up this will just pinch the two pieces of timber together and clamp these wires in place so I'll get this done off camera tightened up so you're aiming for something like that I'll see you in the next step you should be ending up with something looking like that now what I've done is I've just masked off could have sprayed this before but I masked off the little bit of black heat shrink the next stage to do on this I'm just gonna spray this in some black paint just to finish it off so it looks make it a little bit more tidy and I'll see you in a minute so there you go guys that's nice and simple you've seen the step by step just take your time especially with your saw in your hand you don't want to chop your fingers off before you start airbrushing it's nice and easy and it works it's not broke the bank a little bit of timber coat hanger bit of heat shrink an eight mil bolt a couple of screws bit of wood glue and you've got yourself a nice sturdy airbrush holder you, your brushes ain't going to slide forward you can bend your wires and move them in and out and bend them to suit your brush but that's the ps270 that's an iwater hpc on the side and we've got a side feed that sits on there as well so it works guys it's nice and cheap and it will it'll get you going and that's what it's about doing things you can make things like these on the cheap and it's not going to harm you in your pocket when you are starting out so i hope you've enjoyed this video don't forget if you're new to the channel click that subscribe press that notification and i'll see you in the next one cheers